Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we are talking about a topic that is lurking just under the surface of a lot of conversations around AI and policy and regulation and geopolitics, which is of course the use of AI in the military and the intelligence establishment. The specific catalyst for having this conversation today is a new product from Microsoft that's effectively a top-secret generative AI service for U.S. spy agencies. Now, intelligence agencies are not strangers when it comes to LLMs. It's pretty safe to say that every intelligence agency in the world, certainly those in the U.S., have been experimenting with this technology right from the very beginning. However, there has always been a particular challenge with that use case in that there is basically no area in the world that has greater data sensitivity than the intelligence world. Think about the disaster that could happen if, for example, U.S. intelligence services fed top-secret data into an LLM like OpenAI, and that somehow leaked into other people's use. So what Microsoft introduced this week was what they're advertising as the first LLM that operates fully separate from the internet. Writes Bloomberg, most AI models, including OpenAI's ChatGPT, rely on cloud services to learn and infer patterns from data. But Microsoft wanted to deliver a truly secure system to the U.S. intelligence community. Said William Chappelle, Microsoft's chief technology officer for strategic missions and technology, Microsoft has deployed a GPT-4-based model and key elements that support that model onto a cloud with a, quote, air-gapped environment that is isolated from the internet. Chappelle said that Microsoft has spent the last 18 months working on this system. As part of that, they had to overhaul an existing AI supercomputer based in Iowa. Chappelle said, this is the first time we've ever had an isolated version. When isolated means it's not connected to the internet, and it's on a special network that's only accessible by the U.S. government. About 10,000 people have the clearance to access this AI, and Microsoft describes it as static, meaning it can read files but not learn from them or from the internet. Again, Chappelle said, you don't want it to learn on the questions that you're asking and then somehow reveal that information. Now again, even though this might be an even more useful type of tool, it's not like intelligence agencies have been doing nothing. Last year, for example, the CIA launched something like ChatGPT that operated at unclassified levels. But as Sheetal Patel, the assistant director of the CIA for the Transnational and Technology Mission Center, told a conference last month, there's a race to get generative AI onto intelligence data. She said the first country to use generative AI for their intelligence would win the race. And she said, I want it to be us. What's next is, of course, test to make sure that this operates in the way that they hope it does. For now, the CIA and the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, which oversees America's 18 intelligence organizations, have not commented. Now, this conversation around the military and intelligence community's use of AI is something that I pay attention to fairly closely. About a week ago, there was an interesting discussion that came up, embodied by this Axios article, AI Hits Trust Hurdles with U.S. Military. Axios writes, Some branches of the U.S. military are hitting the brakes on generative AI after decades of Department of Defense experiments with broader AI technology. This was based on an article in Foreign Affairs called Why the Military Can't Trust AI. Large language models can make bad decisions and could trigger nuclear war. The piece was written by Max Lamparth, a fellow at Stanford Center for International Safety and Cooperation and the Stanford Center for AI Safety, and Jacqueline Schneider, a Hoover fellow at the Hoover Institution, as well as the director of the Hoover Wargaming and Crisis Simulation Initiative. The first part of the article just goes through the recent history of generative AI and how the military started experimenting with it, but then suggests that recently there have been some issues. They write, despite the enthusiasm for AI and LLMs within the Pentagon, its leadership is worried about the risk that the technologies pose. Hackathons sponsored by the Chief Digital and Artificial Intelligence Office have identified biases and hallucinations, and recently the U.S. Navy published guidance limiting the use of LLMs, citing security vulnerabilities and the inadvertent release of sensitive information. They then talked about a series of war games that they held in an academic setting. The goal of these war games was to see how human experts and LLMs made different decisions in the same scenarios. In other words, this wasn't humans playing against LLMs, it was humans against humans and LLMs against LLMs. They write, the game placed players in the midst of a U.S.-China maritime crisis as a U.S. government task force made decisions about how to use emerging technologies in the face of escalation. Players were given the same background documents and game rules, as well as identical PowerPoint decks, word-based player guides, maps, and details of capabilities. They then deliberated in groups of four to six to generate recommendations. On average, both the humans and the LLM teams made similar choices about big-picture strategy and rules of engagement. But as we changed the information the LLM received or swapped between which LLM we used, we saw significant deviations from human behavior. For example, one LLM we tested tried to avoid friendly casualties or collisions by opening fire on enemy combatants and turning a Cold War hot, reasoning that using preemptive violence was more likely to prevent a bad outcome to the crisis. The problem, they said, was not that an LLM made worse or better decisions than humans, or that it was more likely to quote-unquote win the war game. 
It was rather that the LLM came to its decisions in a way that did not convey the complexity of human decision-making. LLM-generated dialogue between players had little disagreement and consisted of short statements of fact. It was a far cry from the in-depth arguments so often a part of human wargaming. Now, it's important to note that while the article is called AI Hits Trust Hurdles with the U.S. Military, it's not actually military sources that are saying they're mistrusting of AI. It's this set of experts from Stanford. Still, there is enough of a pattern that it's worth noting. For example, Space Force paused the use of generative AI back in September of last year, and in June, the Navy's chief information officer, Jane Overslaw Rathbun, concluded that while, quote, generative AI can be a force multiplier, commercial models have inherent security vulnerabilities that are not recommended for operational use cases. Meanwhile, another person affiliated with Stanford University, Marietta Shockey, wrote a different op-ed for the Financial Times called Military is the Missing Word in AI Safety Discussions. Government attempts to regulate the technology must look at its use on the battlefield. She writes, Western governments are racing each other to set up AI safety institutes. The US, UK, Japan, and Canada have all announced such initiatives, while the US Department of Homeland Security added an AI safety and security board to the mix only last week. Given this heavy emphasis on safety, it is remarkable that none of these bodies govern the military use of AI. Meanwhile, the modern-day battlefield is already demonstrating the potential for clear AI safety risks. Now, regardless of whatever conclusions she comes to in the piece, I think that the underlying point that a conversation about AI safety or AI in general is incomplete without discussing the military application is totally correct. It's something that I've often pointed out on this show when discussing these regulatory conversations. While on the same day, some U.S. military offices announced their latest thing with AI, just rapidly adopting it regardless of those conversations. Given how at the heart of geopolitical struggles AI increasingly is, I believe that you're going to see a lot more of this discussion about AI in the military and AI in intelligence agencies in the months and years to come. For now, though, that is going to do it for the AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.